Hi everybody, this is Meredith from the Witty Gritty Paper Co. And today we are going to be doing the last part of our um, beginner watercolor exercises on the channel here. And in the last two episodes, so far we have talked about uh, transparency and mark making. And today we are going to talk about wash techniques. Now wash techniques are basically, you know, the building blocks of all paintings. So they're really important to know. Um, however, even if you've been painting for a long time, I really think that this is a great exercise and um, there might be some techniques here that you haven't heard of or that you haven't done recently. So I actually like to do this exercise myself um, pretty often to keep refreshing and it's, you know, it's a lot of fun too and these are very important to know. Okay, so the first one I have here, um, I've got six on my paper and the first one I've got is the flat wash. Now flat washes are one of the first things that, one of the first terms that you'll probably hear if you attend a watercolor class or if you watch many videos on YouTube, it's um, a very common term. However, they are sort of deceptively easy. You think they're gonna be easy, but they can actually be kind of tricky and they are, they're fussy, that's the best word for them. So I thought I will just share my favorite way to do them. So first thing I'm going to do is take the biggest brush I want to handle for this, and this is a three quarter inch square wash brush, and I've got just water in it here, just plain water, no paint, and I'm going to fill in the square just with water, and I do not want this to be puddle wet. I just want it to be kind of shiny wet all over, and I want to keep this really nice and even. That's the trick to these. Um, the other trick to a flat wash is to have your color pre-mixed. So I am grabbing some Opera Rose here and I'm loading my brush up with paint and I'm going to drop it right in. Now I want to make sure I paint very consistently in one direction here in that I work fast. The enemy of the flat wash, um, actually there are a couple enemies. The first one would be painting in different directions and um, not having your color evenly dispersed. So work as fast as you can and try to um, absorb up any areas of excess paint here. I'm just drying off my brush with a paper towel, going back in and picking up some of this color on the edge. I want it to be very even here. And once you get this the way you like it, make sure you just leave it alone. Flat washes, are ruined very quickly if you get fussy with them. So I'm just gonna leave mine alone here. And you can also tip your board too to help the paint spread. Um, and today I'm working on a two-sided block here. And I'm using paper that's a little bit nicer than I have in our last couple videos. Just because um, with wash techniques, your paper gets a lot of moisture and um, I think that buckling is really, really annoying for the particular uh, techniques we're doing today. So um, I would recommend that you break out something a little bit nicer. I wouldn't go with your cheapest student grade stuff for these, just because I think it'll be more frustrating. All right, so let's move on to the next one. And um, this one here is a gradient wash. And um, it's also called a gradiated wash or a fade. It's got a lot of names, but no matter what you call it, it's basically just um, color that fades down, that's darkest at the top and lightens as you go down. So it's a pretty simple concept and we're going to start the same way that we did with our flat wash. Just taking my brush filled with clean water and filling in this square. And feel free to, if you want to um, paint these along with me and just pause the video when you need to, or um, come back to the video when you are ready to paint, just for reference. I'm pretty sure that all of you will have at least seen some of these techniques before, if not all of them. But really, a refresher on these, they're, they are the basic foundation of watercolor, so a refresher on them is always useful. All right, so I'm gonna grab some Payne's Gray, still using my 3 quarter inch brush, and I've got my brush loaded with paint here. It's got a lot of pigment. I'm gonna start with one stroke at the top. I wanna keep this, once again, in one direction. Now slowly, I'm try to get my hand not to cover it up here. Slowly, I'm going to 
paint down my square. Now at this point here, I'm going to grab, just wash out my brush a little bit, not entirely, just to help the pigment flow. I've got a big puddle at the top here, so I'm just going to just going to try to even that out a little bit with my brush. And feel free to work slower than I'm working here, but, um, but not too slowly. Just because you don't want streaks. Once again, the enemy of a gradiated wash as well as a flat wash is really streaks. All right, so I've got my pigment pretty, pretty evenly dispersed here. And I'm going to tip my page just a little bit. I don't want to tip it too much. Just a little bit to help the pigment flow. And if you get drips, make sure you have a paper towel nearby, or you can use a thirsty brush, which is just a brush with its water or paint squeezed out, and use that to pick up any pools of paint. Pooling um, will lead to blooms, so you really want to try to catch those before they happen. All right, I think I'll add one more just sweep of color here. I can get a little um, little obsessive with gradiated washes, so I'm going to try to keep it together here for you guys. <laughs> not watch you, um, not have you watch me obsess over it. Okay. And I recommend that you do use a square wash brush for a gradiated wash and for a flat wash as well. I find they work the best. I mean, you could use a round. Um, I would make sure it's a big round. But, um, but I think that the square wash just makes it easier. All right, so on to the third technique here, and this is wet on wet. And basically all of these washes, all these techniques are basically just variations of how you're putting your paint on your paper. And you would think that there would be only one way, but in watercolors there are many ways, even more than what I'm going to show you today. So just keep that in mind. All right, I'm sorry, this is bothering me. All right, I'm done, I promise. <laughs> like I said, they, they kind of make me a little obsessive, the gradiated washes, which is, like I said, really, it's the enemy because the more you fuss with it, like I already can see that I fussed with it too much there, the more you fuss with it, um, the more likely you are to ruin it. So just don't be like me, leave it alone when, when you're done with it, when it needs to be left alone. So for the wet and wet, we're gonna start by adding a flat wash of color here. And this is pretty self-explanatory, just like its name. It's basically just, wet paint into wet paint. So I'm starting with just a thin wash of ultramarine blue, and I'm not particularly trying to make it perfect like our flat wash. I don't really care if it's streaky. I just need to make sure that it's all over my square. And it's pretty wet. Like I said, it's like probably shiny wet, not puddle wet. And then I'm going to switch over to my round brush. Switch over to my number eight round and I'm gonna pick up some alizarin crimson. Now, wet on wet, some would say, um, and I'd probably agree, is one of the most beautiful things that watercolors can do and it only happens in watercolors. This doesn't work in acrylics or oils. It's very special and unique and beautiful, so. Um, You'll probably love it and want to employ it a lot in your paintings. So I've got my brush with my alizarin crimson. I'm just gonna drop it into this wet paint. Now I can paint around a little bit if I want. But do you see how the paint just sort of fireworks out into the other wet paint? It's just beautiful. And if my if I had my um, blue layer even wetter here, it would spread even further. And as this dries, it's gonna flow out and become fuzzier and just be beautiful. And wet on wet is gorgeous for big areas of soft color. So skies, um, you know, I'm just gonna say buildings, but that's not appropriate at all. Um, mainly skies, I would say, is what it's used for the most. Skies and other um, large portions of sort of soft color. So wet on wet is, uh, it's just so pretty. I could do all six squares like this and have a lot of fun, but, um, but we want to learn something, not just not just play. Uh, but this is beautiful. So a lot of artists, this is their main style. They just love the wet and wet, and I do as well. So 
you've probably either done this intentionally or unintentionally before. This is probably not um, new to you, but this is just, you know, a recap and, and, um, and an exercise video. All right, so let's move on to the next one. The next one is wet on dry. Now this is probably the way that when you did your first painting, this is probably the way that you approached it because this is how most beginners would assume you're supposed to do it. You start with a brush just filled with some, you know, wet pigment and your paper's dry, your brush is wet and you just paint right on there. Now, I would say that this is probably, out of the techniques I'm showing today, this is probably one that I use, probably the, the most rare one I'm using here because I think that it's a little bit uninspired, personally, um, but it can look very cool. I think that it's cool if you actually really like the, um, you know, the acrylic style, the oil style, but you're working in watercolors because you, you're going to get harder lines when you use this technique. You're going to end up with hard lines. So can you, you guys should be able to see them here. I'm hoping that they're showing up on the camera, um, but this is the nature of painting this way. Your paper is not wet, so your paint's going to dry pretty quickly. Um, I think it can look really cool. It's just, I don't find um, that I use it very much in my paintings. But again, it's good to know, and it's probably, like I said, it's probably the way um, that you started. I think it's the way that most beginners assume that you start, just wet brush on dry paper. Not rocket science. It can look cool, though. Like I said, you know, it's not, it's not, I don't use it very much. It's not my favorite, but I, I definitely think it has a place, so. Um. Very easy, basic one. All right, the next one is, I'm going to bet, one you haven't heard of. I think it's pretty rare. It doesn't come up um, nearly as much as most of these other ones, and it is called dry on wet. And you're probably thinking to yourself, how in the world can you do dry on wet? Um, you know, the paper, the paper is usually the dry element of the equation, but you can, you can do dry on wet, and I will show you how. So first I'm going to start with a wash similar to what we did up in this square, um, except I'm going to use yellow, Nicolazo yellow. And this is actually one of my absolute favorite yellows. I love that it is both earthy and vibrant at the same time. So I absolutely love it. And um, the names and brands of all the paints that I'm using today should be in the description. I'll put them in the description for you guys. So I'm going to just do this wash of Nicolazo. And I want this to be like our blue layer. I want it to be shiny wet, not puddle wet. Now I'm going to grab um, my round brush again. And here's where the equation gets interesting. I'm going to grab some Windsor Violet here. And what I want to do is mix a very dry mix. I do not want much water in this at all. Now obviously it's watercolors so there needs to be some but I want this to be almost entirely paint. I do not want to get very much water in here at all. Mostly paint. It'll be thicker than you're used to working with probably. And um, you could work out of the tube for this. As a general rule I don't I don't recommend you work right from your tube just because I think it's wasteful but in this case for this technique um, it would be appropriate. So if you've been itching to work right from your tubes this would be the, um, this would be the time. All right. All right, so I can see here, I'm gonna look at my side of paper, I can see that it is still wet. That's important, that it is still at least slightly wet. All right, I've got Windsor Violet that I mixed, my dry mix of Windsor Violet in my brush. And I'm going to drop it in here. Now, the reason it's called dry on wet, it's not entirely um, entirely true because obviously you're still using wet paint, but what you're using is a very thick mix of wet paint. And because it's so thick, it doesn't move around nearly as much as your um, the thinner paint that you usually, or you probably usually use, would move around. It's not gonna move around quite like the wet on wet because they're just, it's not nearly as wet, it's thicker. And I've got my smaller round brush here with some 
dioxazine moth in it, same principle, just a different color. And um, this technique, I actually, I really like it. I, um, I've been trying to incorporate it more into my paintings because I just think it's so cool. It really reminds me of the look of graffiti. I just think it has that sort of sprayed on appearance that um, I find really cool. It's hard to accomplish this any other way in watercolors. So this is a really cool extra technique that you, I'm gonna bet that you probably haven't seen before. Okay, so last technique here is less of a wash technique and really just more of a um, effect. And it is called dual colors. So usually, if you've been painting for any length of time, I'm sure you know, or even if you're a beginner, I'm sure you know that if you paint um, an area next to an area that is still wet, they're gonna bleed into each other. You're not going to get a hard edge, you're not going to get a clean edge, they're going to bleed into each other. And most of the time, I would say it's a mistake. Most of the time, if it happens to a beginner or you know, even somebody who's painting for a while, they deem it as a mistake. But in this case, using it the way we're gonna use it today, it is going to be um, intentional. So I'm gonna start by grabbing my square wash brush again, and I've got some lemon yellow in it, and I'm going to paint half of my square here. Try to get it pretty even down the middle. And something that's gonna help you with all of these washes is pre-mixing your color, like not just the flat wash. I know I mentioned it with the flat wash, but with all of these, it's really gonna help if your colors are pre-mixed because the time it takes to mix a color can actually really affect what you're doing. I mean, if I put down my water here and then mixed my color, then mixed my pink and then laid it in, I'd probably have streaks because the water would have been drying as I was mixing my color instead of going right into it. So. Um, it seems like a little thing, but really, if you overlook it, it can it can be a costly mistake depending on depending on what you're working on and how long it takes you. All right, so now I'm loading up my brush with some green gold here, and I am just going to paint right next to this. Now, as you can see, the green gold is overtaking the yellow. And that's, um, that's exactly what we want. That's exactly the idea of dual colors. Now I'm using two colors here that are pretty close to each other. So if I was working with colors that were more opposites, such as the red and blue we used on the square above here, the effect would be even more dramatic. But I actually prefer the effect with colors that are more similar. I think that it almost looks like a gradient wash. Not exactly, but almost. So this dual colors I think can look very, very cool. And I, like I said, I prefer it with colors that are more similar, but if you chose distinct opposites, it would probably look very interesting as well. So you can see how the edges, they're bleeding into each other here, and that's exactly what we want for dual colors. Okay, guys, so these are all of our washes. And um, remember that your paper is gonna remain slightly bumpy until they dry. So don't remove the paper from your block or don't remove your masking tape. If you use masking tape instead, don't remove it until the paper has flattened out. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much for watching. I really hope you've enjoyed this series. I've really enjoyed making it for you. And um, if this video has been a help to you, please like it and subscribe to our channel for more content like it. And I would really appreciate it if you would check out any of the links at the end of this video. All right, guys. Thanks again for watching. Bye. Thank you.